Mr. Ellis is going to make a little speech here. Samuel Goldensburg, or should I say Sam Gold, again you've been chosen mayor of Greenfield. And it's because you proudly bear a nickname that is for us both a symbol and a reality. Go. <laughs> and I mean, Mayor, that ever since you took over, we've had a downpour of gold, like a blessing out of heaven on our prosperous city. Now, as a modest token of our gratitude, the citizens got together and we decided you should have our sincere thanks and gold. So we now give you this little engraved plaque stamped, as you can see, with the brand that cattlemen all over the country know and respect as a mark of your great abilities. I'm talking for everyone here when I say we owe our thanks to you. Let's have a cheer for gold. Thank you, friends. Thank you. Now, my friends, you say that the prosperity of the citizens of this town is the result in part of my modest efforts. Then I have to say that we need a good man to protect this prosperity for us, a man who knows how to make others respect the law. Morton Anderson, in his official capacity as Greenfield District Judge, has allowed those 30 days to go by which are legally stipulated to nominate a sheriff. I know that we all, as citizens of Greenfield, mustn't be kept waiting any longer. We must elect our right sheriff right now. What we want here in Greenfield is a man who knows the law. A man who's energetic, but most important of all, we want a man who's honest. Now, who do you nominate? There's one man like that here, and you all know he is. And you know he's a man of courage. Fred Lloyd! Yes, Fred Lloyd! Yeah. Fred Lloyd is a man Let's who have can have a toast to Fred Lloyd! Here's the Fred! Let's have a cheer for Sheriff Lloyd! Come on, Fred. They all want you. Here's the Sheriff Lloyd! No Sheriff of Greenfield! There you have it, my friends. All of you agree that Fred Lloyd is the Sheriff you want. Wait a minute, Mayor. How come you're in such a hurry? Shut your mouth, you big drunk. We made our decision. Go back and sit down. What do you want? Now, stop that. Just quiet down. If Bob Baker wants to stand up and talk a while, that's his privilege. We in Greenfield want a capable sheriff. And for this, the man in front of us is the best choice. But Mayor Gold went on to say that we also want a sheriff who's honest. And this is where every one of you here is mistaken. You're drunk, Baker. 
Why don't you go on home and sleep it off? If I was really drunk, I'd have the guts to say to his face that Fred Lloyd is the biggest thief in Greenfield. You're drunk. You must be to say a thing like that, Baker. I ain't no more drunk than you are. Get out of here, you no good drunk! <laughs> What's going on in there? The new sheriff's a thief as bad as they come. And when I said so... Well, let's try again. No. No, I don't want to walk back in there and get killed. You're going back. Let's go. They're all round. You heard me, go back and sit down. You're begging for another lesson. Let go of him. Mind your own business, stranger. <clears throat> Did you hear what I said, stranger? Get out of here! And I told you to leave that fella alone. Would you mind explaining the reason for all this? You're Mayor Gold, aren't you? Yes. I'm Gary Ryan, the new sheriff. As it happens, we were just about to elect one. But it seems that we would have just wasted our efforts. Two sheriffs for Greenfield would be just a little too much. <laughs> you realize that Judge Anderson was supposed to let us know that you were nominated inside 30 days? Yes, I know. The paper is dated the 2nd of January. It's true, it's all in order. Judge Anderson is a little late in informing us, but I think he's made the best choice. Gary Ryan, a name famous throughout the West. Now I'd like the keys to my office. I want to begin right away. Why the rush? Are you expecting trouble so soon? <laughs> it's best to be ready. Of course, you're right. Sheriff, these are the keys to your office. Thanks. Your Honor, I'll uh, see you later. Mm -hmm. Good day, Sheriff. Good morning, gentlemen. So long. Thanks, friend. In my opinion, our new Sheriff is quite a man of us. What would you say to transferring the gold you've been storing here in Greenfield to the Federal Bank over in Brighton? Mm, it would relieve me of a great responsibility. I'd put my trust in Ryan. The sheriff and his escort would accompany the wagon all the way to Old Rocks. No one would be fool enough to attack it. Yes. Una buena escolta. Son cinco muchachos valientes y de absoluta confianza. Le acompañarán hasta Owell Rocks. Está a 64. You'll need an escort the rest of the way. From there to Brighton, it should be easy. I don't know about that mayor with a hundred pounds of gold. I won't relax until we're there. The essential thing is that no one hears about it. Now, don't worry, Mr. Ryan. The shipment will be made in total secrecy. I wish I was as sure as you are. At Old Rocks, you'll find Amos Sutton, the teller from Brighton. He got there yesterday. Have him sign this receipt and send it back to me right away with Coleman. Sure, Mr. Ellis, I'll do that. Ryan, the shipment's in good hands, and good luck to you. God be with you.
Thanks. Adios. Here are the instructions. Cheer up, Coleman. It's going to be easy as pie. Is that a promise, Sheriff? At least I'm glad to get away. I can tell you it's no fun being locked up at the bank all day. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we're ready. Okay, Sheriff. I plan on being in Old Rocks before nightfall. Get in. Right, Sheriff. Let's go. Get started. Tell Garrido I promise he'll get a third of the gold. But as for Gary Ryan, you just shoot him down. Okay, I'll tell him. Get those horses of yours moving, Tom. We have to get to Old Rocks before nightfall. Don't worry, Sheriff. We'll make it. Yeah! Another bottle, Pete. No, that's plenty. Thanks. Five dollars. I pass. Wait a minute, Joe. I pass, too. I raise your ten. I'll make it twenty. Oh, shall I make it fifty? Don't get yourself up too high. A teller in a bank shouldn't throw money around like that, Sutton. I'll be the judge of that. You stay in. Whiskey. Make it the best you have it with by the barrel. <laughs> Nobody can beat this. I wondered where I'd seen those three before. Hang around with Garrido Gomez. Garrido? What's he doing in these parts? Why don't you go over and find out? Poker? The lousy game. El Paripe is the one you should try. You know it? No, El Paripe, no. Too bad. Sure, I know the game. Take your pick. You're a real professional, amigo. <laughs> but this time, I win the hand. Put it all in here. Vamos. Muchas gracias, senores. You better keep your hands on top of the table. You men will never get away with this. I'm a friend of Judge Anderson's, and when he hears about this... Uh, give my sincere good wishes to your amigo, senor. Vamos. Board up those windows. The place looks empty. Let's take a look. Is anyone there? Who is it? The Sheriff of Greenfield. And Coleman, Collins, open the door. Hello. It's Amos Sutton. He's dead. What's the story? There were three Mexicans. They worked for Greedy Gomez. They stole all our money and killed Sutton. Open up, Carl. It's me, Coke. Open the door.
Dorito Gomez is here. At Devil's Cliffs, 20 miles from Old Rocks. He's got his whole gang with him. Give me a drink, Collins. I never thought I was going to make it. They've been here already? You can see for yourself. Looks as if somebody talked about the gold. Is there any way to Brighton that avoids the main road? No, there isn't. The road passes Devil's Cliffs, and it's very dangerous. We're heading back to Greenfield, Sheriff. Gold only paid us to come as far as Old Rocks with a wagon. But he didn't mention Brighton or Garrido Gomez. We have to hurry, Sheriff. You understand. Yeah, sure. It seems just the two of us are going to Brighton. I'll give $100 to anyone who will accompany us in that wagon as far as Brighton. Why should I risk my neck? No, I'm getting out of here. You boys will return to Greenfield if you're smart. I sure could use $100, but it's worth nothing if you don't have the time to spend it in. And Garrido isn't the kind of man to leave witnesses behind him. Good luck, Sheriff. Two doubles. Say, could you see your way clear to offering me a drink? I don't have any ready cash with me. <laughs> and you refuse to earn a hundred dollars. Let me introduce myself. I'm Marty Hayward. I'm a professional wanderer. Another double. You're a gambler, aren't you? The Mexicans took over three hundred dollars from me just now. And I would have doubled that if the game hadn't been interrupted so soon. That's the way it goes, though, gentlemen, isn't it? To health and good fortune. You men still want someone to go with you? Yeah, that makes three of us. But I got a plan I think will work. Is there a wagoner around where they make repairs and things like that? Yeah, I do it myself. If we can just work all night, maybe we can do it. Let's have a look. It seems to be like any other wagon if you just look at the outside. Get in, Hayward. From this moment on, you're my deputy sheriff. You're out of your head. You want to ruin my reputation? Huh. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> try to hold them off until the canyon. By then, we'll be safe. And when we get where we're going, we split up, huh? That's kind of too bad. You'll be able to find me in Greenfield if you want. No, Greenfield is no place for a gambling man. But if you ever decide to change your profession, you can find me at Poorland. There's a mine there. Nearly all the gamblers hang out there. Just watch out. They don't find you double dealing. Impossible. You made me a deputy sheriff. I'll never get caught cheating again. <laughs> <laughs>
I'll throw this. Go ahead. Ryan, I won't forget that. The canyon! Yeah! We're almost there, Marty. One false move, we're finished. I don't think I like being a deputy. According to the newspapers, everyone's talking about Gary Ryan, the sheriff of Greenfield. You're on your way to becoming a national hero. Take it. One of these days you'll be proud to own a copy. Sure I will, Mayor. Oh, uh, these are the receipts I got in bright. Thank you. Sheriff, you've done us a great service. But mere words of gratitude can't repay it. You deserve something better. I say you should receive a reward. Something more tangible. <laughs> no, thanks. For me, it was just a part of my job. Now, that reminds me, I had some unexpected expenses. Marty Hayward, the horses, the wagon. Maybe I'll in the count on that, and I'll see that you'll pay. Down to the last penny. Thanks, I will. Will you excuse me, Mayor Gold? Go right ahead, Sheriff. Uh, you'll be staying at the Sander, Judge. That's right. Judge Anderson. Ryan. I hope you've had a good journey. One of the worst trips I've ever taken in a stagecoach, but still I had to come. Why? What's wrong? Once again, the cattle rustlers have given us a terrible time. Oh, we'll find them all right. I already have a couple of interesting leads. Yes, there are plenty of clues to go on. Only last time they went so far as to kill a man. A man called William Baker. He was a rancher in Pueblo Conejos. Yes, it's true. The rustlers killed him when you were away fighting that bandit Garrido. Well, I'm going to make my headquarters in Greenfield until these murderers are brought to justice. That's good. Give me another. Double. 
What's the matter, Matthews? Drinking to get your courage up? Watch what you're saying, Lloyd. What makes you think I'm afraid of Gary Ryan? Don't lose your temper. Cusack says the sheriff will be at the hotel all afternoon. You go in and figure out a way to insult Ryan. Think of something to get him mad. But no matter what, he's got to take out his revolver. As for the rest, don't worry. Leave that up to us. Let me kill Ryan. I can do it alone. You just do what I tell you to, Matthews. Another double whiskey for Matthews. I'll pay you for it. You need all the courage you can get. Have Cheryl ready. She knows what to do. Okay, I'm ready. When do we start? Right away. Here goes. Hold it. Huh? Better leave that here. Why? You might get mad and use it on someone. The mayor and I can't save you from the gallows. You're right, Lloyd. <laughs> There's not much business this morning. You can come back this evening. I'll be all right alone. Thanks. talking to me? Why, who did you think? Ain't you the only mangy stranger in the room? You've been drinking. Try a little fresh air. Afraid, you coward? Told me you were a chicken-hearted punk, but I didn't know you were as bad as this. Get up, you coward. <laughs> He's the one who did it. Ryan just shot him down. Cheryl and I saw him use this gun. You're a little trigger happy. He was unarmed, Ryan. It's an obvious case of homicide. Liar! I didn't do it! Ryan, oh. you'll map you. Bring him outside! Bring him up! Give him a taste of his own medicine! Take him out! The rest is up to you. Quiet! Quiet, everybody! What's going on here? Matthews What's happened by Ryan? Cusack saw it all. Yeah, I saw him die. Matthews wasn't on, Mayor. And besides, he'd obviously been drinking too much. All right, Lloyd, I understand, but we still have to give the man a trial. What do you mean, a trial? There ain't gonna be a trial. We're gonna hang him right away. The mayor's uh, the law here. Uh, the man must have a chance to clear himself if he can. Ryan, listen. Tell us who killed that man in there. I wasn't able to find out. Ryan did it. I saw him and so did Cheryl. This is the weapon. You can still smell the powder. Yes, it's been fired. But not against Matthews. I shot against the real killer outside the window. Don't believe it, Judge. I saw it all. And so did Cheryl. Yes, I saw Ryan kill Matthews. He never had a chance. That's false. Are you aware that your testimony could determine the outcome of the trial? Well, are you? I saw him do it. Who 
have we got to take this man into custody? We need someone we can trust until the time of the trial. Lloyd, he'd been appointed already as our new sheriff. Fine. Then I'm putting Ryan into your custody. Home a jury right away. I want the names tomorrow morning. Mm, certainly, Judge. Take him to the jail. The judge was right there. The witnesses were all ready. They even had the rope ready. What need is there in having a trial? And it would have been a lot better for you. You wouldn't have had to wait around like this. I could have stayed in bed the rest of the day. You want coffee? I take it that means you don't want coffee. Yeah? Open up, Duncan. It's Jack. Now, just wait a minute, friend. This ain't no saloon. I, I know saloon when I see one. Come on, Baker. Come on. Where are the dancing girls? You got a time for a Baker? Come girl. on now, Baker. You're going to have a nice long run. Well, the girl. went in the coasters and tried to bring over here. Door. Yeah. One more case for Judge Anderson to pass early on in the morning. Hey. Get in there. <laughs> 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 Thanks, boys. <laughs> You're a mess, Baker. Yeah, and I love it. <laughs> Listen, friend. Until the dancing girls come on, I'm going to sing a song. Oh, so oh, Oh, you guy for me. Oh, hey, I'm from my haven't you got another place to put this loud mouth drunk? That's enough out of you. Shut your mouth, Baker. Ah, go home. Go home. Just give me some coffee. Please, I want something to settle my food. Oh. I'll bring it to you. Just be still. Oh. Try a cup of this. <laughs> don't make a move. And don't cry out. Nobody's been hanged twice for killing somebody else. Let's get out of here. Sorry about this, Duncan. <laughs> Open it. The horses are already saddled. Why are you doing this for me, Baker? William Baker was my brother. They killed him three days ago. He was the rancher at Pueblo Conejos. Yeah. He discovered something about the cattle rustling that's been going on. I'm risking my neck for you, Ryan. Because you're the only man who can do anything against Lloyd. The man's a thief and a killer. But have you any proof of that? No, only a name. Jeremiah Prescott. Who's he? He knows something. He's at Pueblo Conejos. Evelyn, my niece, should be able to tell you more about it. the rows of Portlands. There they are. Yeah. Help Ryan to escape. He pretended he was drunk. 
He smuggled a gun in right under my nose. Maybe he knows where Ryan went. We better take him to my ranch. Wait a minute. The man needs a doctor. He's been wounded. I'm sorry, Judge. There won't be a trial tomorrow. Gary Ryan has escaped jail. He was in your custody. It's your job to get him. He can't make it far. We have a telegraph in town. We wire that Ryan is wanted. We promise a big reward. I'll guarantee that, Judge. Five thousand dollars. All right. place a person can go around here when he hasn't bargaining to do? If you want to sell that saddle, try the place on the corner. They'd be glad to get it. Thanks. What's that? Another reward? No, bad fire in Lakewood. Already burned down ten houses. A beer. You got a horse you're willing to sell? No, my horse died. If you're thinking of selling that saddle, the most I can offer you is $10. No. Thanks, anyhow. Two. I need a horse bad. Can you help me out? It depends on what you can pay, son. I've got twenty dollars. Won't be able to buy a horse for that. Hey, gents, listen, we got a man here who's looking for a horse, and he's got twenty dollars to spend. What are you gonna do? You're gonna stay or drop out of the game. Hey, you cowboy, have you really got twenty dollars on you? Yeah. Let me borrow it for a minute. Here you go. <laughs> Seven. Ha, ah, you see, you brought me luck. Come on outside and buy your horse. I've got a really beautiful mare. Come on. Uh, bet the kid will lose his pants in this deal. Huh? There's the horse I told you about. She's really a honey, isn't she? Tell me, how does it happen there's a warrant out for you, Ryan? It was a trick, and I fell for it. Yeah? Who did it? A guy called Lloyd. Oh, Lloyd, huh? Why, do you know him? I've heard his name mentioned a couple of times. You're really in trouble. And what if he isn't Ryan? I got a perfect memory, Alan. I'm sure I saw his face on the sign. What if it's not Ryan? For the amount of that reward, it'll be worth the chance. Well, let's see. The whole accusation depends on the false testimony of this Cheryl. The woman who owns the biggest hotel in town. She's a pile of Lloyds. Oh, I'm beginning to get it. <laughs> it's the type of hand I find amusing. I'll do what I can. You leave it all to me. All right, the best thing is to get in touch with Judge Anderson. I know for sure that he believes I'm innocent. Just give me time to collect a little more cash inside, and I'm ready to go to Greenfield. Oh. While I think of it, this is yours. No, you've already given me the horse. Without this, you won't be able to get out of town. Take it and good luck. Thanks. We'll find a way out of this. Hello. 
You got a minute to spare? You and I met once, unless I'm mistaken. I don't think so. I'm sure your face is familiar, Gary Ryan. <laughs> Bring the whole town Here's the poster. Dead or alive. I had a hard time convincing Judge Anderson. And Baker, has he said anything? The man's still delirious. He keeps repeating the same thing. Be quick. Make him talk. And the man's name? Jeremiah Prescott. Jeremiah Prescott? He's still breathing. Yeah, but not for long. Wait outside. Baker. Baker. Wake up and talk. What did you tell Ryan? Huh? How do you know a certain Jeremiah Prescott? Talk or I'll kill you. Why did you help Ryan to escape? You better talk or so help me, you'll die. Talk. It's no use. Can't you tell a man's already dead, Gold? We gotta find where Jeremiah Prescott is hiding out and eliminate him. And right away, or it means trouble for all of us. If Baker talked about Prescott with Ryan, that makes it very easy. You follow Ryan, and you'll find Prescott. And kill the two of them at once. <laughs> oh. Is this the ranch of William Baker? Who are you? I want an answer to my question. Yeah, this is Baker's place. I want to talk to Miss Evelyn. Go ahead and talk. Miss Evelyn? Yes? And my name is... Gary Ryan, and I'm, I'm here on account of your uncle, Bob Baker. Please. Just make yourself at home. That'll be all, Martha. So you're Gary Ryan, the new sheriff of Greenfield. You've been very lucky. Like everybody else on the payroll of Samuel Gold. There isn't a bit of truth in what you're saying. It's true that you're working for Mayor Gold. No, and I never did. Mayor Gold has a warrant out at the moment for my arrest. He does? Yeah. A little joke of Lloyd and his boys. On the basis of false testimony, I found myself locked up in prison and accused of murder. It was your uncle who got me out, otherwise I'd be there still. Baker advised me to find you. He believed that you'd willingly help me. But I guess he was wrong. Why didn't my uncle come with you? They shot him down. Then I don't know what happened. 
What do you mean? You think he's dead? I have a theory that the man who did it also killed William Baker. You don't need to tell me who the man is, Sheriff, because I've already guessed what his name is. It's Gold. He's the man who's behind it all. He's a cattle rustler. He's the one who stole my family's herds. Yes. I think you're right, but it's simple to make accusations. What we need is proof. My father told me he could prove it, but he never had the chance. Before he could talk, Gold murdered him. And still you're not prepared to help me? You must help me find proof, for my sake, for both of us, Evelyn. My father never spoke to anyone of this. I don't know anything at all. Who is Jeremiah Prescott? Prescott? He had a ranch in Pueblo Conejos. He worked for Mayor Gold, but no one has seen him around lately. I'm going out to find him. In Pueblo Conejos, the priest knew my father, Padre Carmelo. He might know something. Thanks, I'll try there. I'm sorry I can't offer you anything, but it's been so long since we've had any guests. No, that's not it at all. It's because there's nothing to eat anymore. No one has had a real meal for a long time. Gold has ruined us, along with all the other ranches in New Mexico. Don't be afraid, Evelyn. I swear that Gold will pay. He'll pay for all that he's done to you and to all the others. So long, Evelyn. Come back soon, Gary. We need my buggy again today. Yes, sir. Welcome to Greenfield, sir. Thank you. It seems like a pleasant town, at least what little I've seen so far. Can you put me up for a few days? Be a pleasure. If you'll be so kind as to sign the register for me. I'd be delighted. Seven, I think. It's one of the nicest rooms we have. You know you should always lock your door, Judge Anderson. And don't sit with your back in an unprotected position. Don't tell me you don't know who I am. Certainly. You assisted Gary Ryan out of Devil's Cliffs. Right. And I risk my neck in the name of the law. But Mr. Ryan asked me to help again. They say he's a murderer in Greenfield. You, Judge, what do you think about that? What I think doesn't mean much, unfortunately. Proof and testimony are the only language that the law recognizes. He fired at a drunk who wasn't armed, Haywood. And for this he must stand trial. The boy's as innocent as you are, Judge. You'll have to prove that. The testimony that you've heard is false. But can you demonstrate that it is? I can try. I'm afraid you'll never succeed. Never. Never. I'm going to try it anyway, Judge. But you must tell me all you know. Show me all your cards. And I'll bet I can win this round of poker faster than anybody else. Because I'm ready to beat their full house. Well, naturally, I'm anxious to do everything possible. I know the boy is innocent. But, uh, but you, you know where he is. He could be almost anywhere, looking for some place to hide. Alone, hunted by the law, and by society. Wanted. Jeremiah Prescott. I see Jeremiah Prescott. His house is on the other side of town, senor. His shop is there, too, and the house is behind it. You go back the way you came. 
Thanks. Vaya con Dios, señor. It's Providence who has sent that man to us. Hey, listen. Pass the word among you. Arm yourselves as best you can. We'll get him in a trap. <laughs> Moses heard the word from Jehovah on the mountain. I will provide bread from heaven. Behold my people and gather it. Exodus, chapter 16, fourth verse. The words of the Lord God. Understand me? No. And what do you want? Are you Padre Carmelo? Yes, I am. Why do they want you? Because they want the reward. Let me explain later. I was sent by Evelyn Baker. Into the sacristy. Come on. Quiet, you children of Satan. Into the church, I'm free to go! When will you learn to obey me? Be quiet! And do not profane with violence the sacred house of God. He is a desperado, Padre, a wanted killer. We want to bring this killer to justice. From justice. There's a reward offered, and we're going to divide it among ourselves, among all these Christians. You, honest, you're worse than Judas. A traitor like Judas, and so are the rest of you. You hope to sell the life of that man for 30 pieces of silver. No, not just 30, Padre. We want $5,000. But you... Silence here! You hear that? You hear the trumpets of God? Listen, and look there! Do you see the shadows of the angels? They are descending upon the earth. You people will all be punished! Look at them waving their flaming swords! The mighty army of angels will strike. Now return to your houses and pray for forgiveness. And pray for the blessing of God. Amen. good for you. Rose it. 
Listen, my son. You've got to try to avoid the peons. They mean well, but they are hungry, my son. They know what famine is. And $5,000 is a lot of money. Is that clear to you? It should be, Padre. If I'd been in their place, and... What would you have done? Me? If it was another man they wanted, well, I guess I'd be willing to go after him, too. Hmm. It's only human. Still, this time, it's you they want. You must be an accomplished criminal to command a price like that. No, Padre. But they're gonna have to pay a much bigger amount if they want to have me dead. Jeremiah Prescott used to work for Mayor Gold. When he started to drink, Gold and Lloyd decided to get rid of him. So he found refuge in the mountains with only his niece along for company. She's the only thing he values in this world. She's not much more than a baby. But you won't get much out of him. He's too frightened. If I can find him, he'll learn there's nothing to be afraid of. You take the road to Carejos till you come to the end of the valley, very near Pueblo Rojo. There you will find a little river. At the bottom of a small cascade, there's a passage in the rocks which leads to a clearing. That's where he lives, in a log cabin. Here, you better take this. He's the one who made it, Jeremiah Prescott, when he was here. It proves that I sent you as a man to trust. If you're lucky, it'll convince him to talk. You're very kind and it will serve to protect you from danger. Yeah, but I want to make sure, so I'm going to buy a gun. You should be ashamed of yourself for your lack of faith. However, you may need this. <laughs> Take it. Thank you, Padre. Come on, I have one more thing for you. A horse. <laughs> asleep now. We'd better wake him up. He's been drinking. We really should let him sleep a little more. One more hour. He hasn't been drinking, mister. He's just a little bit tired. I have just the remedy. What are you going to do with that? It's a way to make his tiredness go away. Ah, where are you, Julie? What's going on here? Yes, Sheriff. Are you looking for anyone? 
I'm looking for him. Ah, yes, now that you mention if there was a fellow like him around, I have an idea it might have been that fellow. And where is the man now? Only God knows that, senor. And Concho Diaz, if I may say so. Then tell me where he is. He's out trying to find someone. Jeremiah was the man. Only Padre Carmelo was positive he knew where he was hiding. But I do know where he is. John Leary is my name. I don't know Padre Carmelo or anyone called Jeremiah Prescott. And you're not supposed to let anyone into the house when I'm taking a nap. Now go away, but I forgive you. Could you make another exactly like this one? I don't know how to carve wood. Padre Camello wouldn't like to hear that. He said that you were a good man. He said that you'd been frightened and very likely you wouldn't talk to me. You might just find him very obstinate, he said. But he doesn't think you're a coward. Padre Carmelo damn well knows that I'm not a coward. Well, maybe I am. If you're looking for Jeremiah Prescott, you found him. Now what do you want? I came because we got two enemies in common. Gold and Fred Lloyd. You and I must stick together. Or else they'll beat us. And what's in it for me if I join you? You won't serve a single day in jail. I did a job for Lloyd a long while ago. There was only one man in the West who was able to do it. I was that one, Jeremiah Prescott. They paid me a lot more than I would ever be able to earn in a whole lifetime. An idea as simple as an egg, and yet a brilliant one. The job was to create the basic design for a special brand that you burn on top of others already on the cattle, so that it's impossible to recognize the brand the animal had before. This is the brand of the Wellington Ranch. Watch what happens. Brand this mark on top of it, and it becomes the sign of Mayor Gold. This one belongs to the Bellows Ranch. Now it's Gold's. McLaglen. Gold. And Baker. Gold. Simple, isn't it? If we have those brands as evidence, the ones that are false, we could prove what Mayor Gold and his bunch of rustlers have done. Do you know where the branding operation takes place? Because that's where those brands are. It's at New Face Rock. I'm willing to accompany you there, boy, but the rest of the adventure's all yours. That's all right. Now, come on. Julie, you keep the door bolted and don't let anyone in at all. I'll be back in a few hours. All right, I'm ready. Adios, Julie. Adios, mister. the place, amigo. You see, it's not far. I don't go further than this. A few hundred yards ahead, and you'll be at New Face Rock. Thanks. If I'm lucky, we'll see one another again. I hope so. You know where to find me. Hurry 
up with that last one. Come on, hurry. Make it nice and even. Boys, we're finished. Nice going. Sometimes before sunup, the animals have got to get safe with the ghost ranch. We better leave soon. Come on. Ready? Let's go, boys. We'll have a fast meal before we go. And double ration of whiskey for everyone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, Sam, let's have that wood. I'm coming. I got to cut it. Well, let's go. on the spit, will ya? Sure. I'll be glad to. Oh. Hey, we've run out of water. Pig. You think you're smart, don't you? You're welcome to my wife and whiskey, no. What are you talking about? Another drink there, will you? Okay. Hmm. There ain't any. You want me to get another bottle? You boys always wait the last minute. Bring another. Hey, Joe, take these and see if they get dry. Lässt du mir noch einen Schluck übrig? Klar, es ist genug für alle da. Kein Laut, sonst mach dich kalt. Ich sehe, du bist vernünftig. Don't get funny or I'll shoot. Put it down. What's keeping that imbecile? He's out sampling the whiskey if I know Bo. Hey, boss, there ain't no more whiskey out here. If there is, I can't find it. You just better hurry up and get in here with some, stupid idiot. Joe, you go and get it, will you?
It took long enough. Yeah, you're right. Now you can have all you want. I want to know where you put the brands you're using. Where are they? Where are they? There they are. Underneath that cot. Listen, you fools, I know you're in there. Come out, or you're burning to death. Come out, Ryan. No, you're mistaken. It's only me and my niece, Lloyd. There isn't any Ryan here. Come and see for yourself. If that's true, get out of there. We won't shoot at you. Stay behind me, sweetheart. And pray that we get out all right. Here I am, Lloyd. There's no one else here, just me and my niece, I swear. <laughs> Brave little girl, Julie. You'll have to be strong. Mm. 
Senorita, this is all I managed to find. That will be all right. Thank you, Maria. Now, a cup of hot cocoa is what you need, dear. Now then, Ryan, open your shirt. It really isn't anything. Perhaps you don't think it's anything. You hear? He doesn't think he's wounded. He wants to pretend he's a hero. Pride is a sin, my son. You had better take heed of what's in the scripture. Unreasonably risking your neck is against God's law. Padre, do the scriptures really say that or just you yourself? Well, the Bible doesn't, but in a certain sense. By in a certain sense, you mean it's not written. So what? It's easier than the scripture by Gary Ryan. A scripture that preaches Mr. Ryan's personal revenge. It's the only way you'll get satisfaction, isn't it? You're mistaken. This isn't revenge at all. This is for justice. For once, Gary, I agree. It's a bad idea, Miss Evelyn, for you to take the branding irons to Judge Anderson. After all, you're the daughter of Bill Baker. You'd be noticed right away. I'll go and wrap up these branding irons. They'll be easier to carry anyway. You have a $5,000 reward on your head, Brian. How can you be certain you'll get to Greenfield? Well, up to now, I've been fortunate. What if Golden Lord apprehend you and get back the branding irons? It's a risk that I gotta take. But not us two. Oh, I'm not talking about me. I'm thinking of others, others like my father, who go ruined. It's a question of justice, yes, I admit that. Only justice is impossible if you go and never... Don't worry, Evelyn, I'll be back. Now that I have reason for coming back. I hope that you will. I hope that you'll be all right. Oh, Gary, please take care. Thanks, Evelyn. Those are the words I was hoping to hear. Ah, man. No. No. Look, it happened to me like this. He must have been hiding in the barnyard. None of the boys knew he was out there until... Ah! No! No! I wasn't the only... Ah! Please! Please! Yeah, pray your last, coward. Get on your horses. You just better find out where Ryan is. And when we find him, we kill him. Let's ride. You will come back for me. I'd be afraid without you. Sure I will, Julie. I promise you. Here are the branding irons. At least you won't risk losing them along the way. Thank you, Padre. Take care of the girl. Good luck. And forget your pride. I'll try anyway. Amen. Have you managed to fix that broken wheel? At least I've been able to get it to work, Padre. Fine. Prepare to leave. Evelyn. Padre. What do you You're mean? You're about to go to Greenfield. Greenfield?
Get him! Get up! This time you're not going to escape us. You didn't expect me to find you so soon, did you? What do you got there? I want him back. <laughs> what kind of stupidity is this? <laughs> You'll be sorry I ever laughed when I get through with you, Ryan. Let's get this over with. Where they are, or you die. Tell us, Ryan, if you don't want to die. tricks if you want to keep on living no Lloyd don't worry about that I know when I've lost when I made off with the brands I must have had a good reason for it no but it wasn't my plan to go to judge Anderson but the brands will get there if you decide to kill me now what's the sense in risking it it'd be the end of both you and gold where are the brands I'll tell you Wait a minute. Maybe you and I can make a bargain. Like what? Mayor Gold wants the brand and irons in his possession. Name what you want. How much? I want Gold to pay $2,000. And I'll need time to prepare my getaway. After all, I don't want to fight. Take me to Mayor Gold. I have an idea that he'll find my proposition worth thinking over. Both the gold and the branding irons, too. The mayor will be glad to see them. Hurry if you know what's good for you. Come on, put back that wheel. 
That's really too bad. Just when you'd hoped you'd trick me. I warned you. But this time you'll be brought to justice, Mr. Ryan. Right ahead to Greenfield and tell Judge Anderson to get everybody prepared for a hanging. And to get out the reward. You've already kept people waiting too long. The hangman above all. I really enjoy a professional hanging. And about time we had a little entertainment at your expense. A <laughs> hundred dollars. You want to see what I have, eh? No, I fold. No. Nope. $200 and I'm calling you. Help yourself, it's yours, senora. <laughs> A full house. A lousy evening. Uh. Our friend here just decided to ruin us. Yes, that's what I was hoping to do. But I think before that happens, I'm going to need more practice. <laughs> Be seeing you soon. Mayor? Marty, you're an idiot. No, no, wait. Tonight I wonder whether you'll really need their protection. You mean maybe you'll be enough for me tonight? Mm-hmm. Wait a minute, honey. You boys can run along now. I won't be needing you again tonight. Okay. Tell me who really killed Matthews. Marty, what are you saying? <laughs> you were there, you saw who did it. <laughs> who did it? I never saw anyone. I don't know who it was. It wasn't Gary Ryan, was it? Then who did it? Answer! <laughs> I don't know anything. I don't know anything. You don't know anything. <laughs> You know who killed Matthews, and you're going to tell me. I'll keep this up until morning if I have to. Please, no more. Please. carry around to you, Judge. Shall we amuse ourselves with a trial? Or just string him up right away? <laughs> no, we'll have a trial, Lloyd. But not against Gary Ryan. Instead, we'll have a trial against the man who's really guilty. Against you, Lloyd. Release Gary. Come out here, Cheryl. Do you still swear by the information you gave us before? Yes. It was Lloyd. Traitor, you'll die for saying that. Give me your pistol. Hurry.
What's happened, Lois? Cheryl talked. She confessed to Judge Anderson. Did you have to come here? And why not? We're in this together, aren't we? Get out of here, Lloyd. I warn you, I've got nothing to do with this fix you're in. And when I've destroyed those Brandon Irons, they won't have any proof at all against me. And when they march you up to the gallows, I'll pray for you. I understand. You're right, too. I got myself into this. Now you're alone, Lloyd. Word of honor, I won't shoot if you come out. I want to see you strung up by the neck, Lloyd. All right, Ryan. I'm coming out. Don't shoot. Who's ready for the gallows? Get 
get going. Take him away. Gary! I'll be right there. Thank you. 